Say, what could be cooler than owning a pristine original 54 Corvette? Well, how about one fitted with a fine 409? Recently, our buddies on the Muscle Car Show bravely began a radical restoration project on a well-spent 61 Impala, beefing up the frame and even having it powder-coated. Lots of major surgery here, replacing floor pans, truck pans, and so forth. Now, I guess for an old beauty like this Impala, this was like getting collagen or Botox. Then, some modern upgrades like a complete air suspension system. Now, these dudes were men on a mission with a vision of a car already named Project Red Sled. And for us horsepower guys in charge of building the engine, this thing had 409 written all over it. It was born during the heyday of the race on Sunday, buy on Monday era. That is, after GM engineers took their 348 engine, poured it out to 409 cubic inches, and made 360 horsepower. Soon after its debut in 61, it was off to the races and winning. A year later, a 409 with twin four-barrel carbs was the first motor ever to match horsepower with cubic inches. Although production ceased in 1965, the 409 legacy and allure lives on and on. People look at it and most of the younger kids say, what is that? <laughs> well, I knew the place to start our 409 build was Lamar Walden's shop in Georgia. Now, he's been fooling with 409 since the early 60s. Lamar was a pro-stock racer in the 70s and early 80s, first driving Vegas, then Chevy Monzas in NHRA competition. With a special passion for Chevy's first big lock, he built and drove the fastest 409 car in history. Now, decades later, he's preserving the engine's history by helping 409 fans with their muscle classics and street rods alike. When you've got a 32, 34 Ford, and it's got a small block in it. If you've seen one, you, you've seen 2,000. But one shows up with a 409 in it, and the crowd's all around it. I was really pumped about bringing this old block we found here for expert machining. These guys like to bore them 30 to 60 thousandths, but seems like this old truck block was way overboard. As a racer, it, it might work, but for, uh, for a street motor, we're gonna have to go with another block. I think you got one? I'm sure we can dig one up over there. Okay. Sorry, Block. <laughs> now, Blocks for these motors are increasingly scarce. Fortunately, they had one they could trade us. Here's something I learned. If you find a Block with an X on it, it's got higher nickel content and maybe a good candidate. You'd bolt the plate down to the Block with these four holes. Then you'd bolt the bar down to the plate and bore off of the deck. The design of the block is part of the uniqueness of the 409. The combustion chamber is merely in the block itself. And when you end up with a flat piston, a small combustion chamber with a real good quench area in it, you won't get torque. This Bel Air runs in a nostalgic stock class with a 409 that makes 592 horsepower at the wheels. All part of Lamar's learning the old weaknesses and potential strengths of the motor. Over the 20 years that I've beat on this old iron here, <laughs> we found what it likes and what it don't like, and uh, the piston design is real critical on making horsepower. The, the squinch of the, of the head has got to be perfect. The pistons that Lamar's making for our 409 with his CNC machine are quite an improvement from the factory design. This piston here is just a basic 425 horse with the uh, 560 force rings. Uh, stock compression height for the six inch rod, where this piston here will be run with a four inch stroke crankshaft with a 6135 rod, so the compression distance you can see is a lot different. Another weakness in the original motor was the valve train, namely push rods poking out of a block without guide plates. The guide plates was just strictly a hole drilled through the head, the push rod ran through it, and, and it stuck up so far above the head itself you got a lot of deflection in the push rod, so of course the push rods would bend and when it kicks sideways, bam. Using more CNC technology, Lamar is making improved new heads for the 409 and the Z11, along with intake manifolds that even can handle a 671 supercharger, plus other products to meet the demands of new 409 aficionados. Meanwhile, our block's getting its deck surfaced 
And here the mains get a complete line honing. This is the final honing after our boring, uh, leaving the block you know, roughly 5,000 small. It was five on one, one bank and seven on the other. And from here, we're gonna, gonna hone it to finish size. For this process that we have uh, on this particular block with the rings we're using, we use two different stones, start with a roughing 220 and finish with, uh, with a 280 thread. Well, finally, I catch up with Rob Walden, who's been balancing our new Eagle crank. Say, what have you done so far? Well, we spun it up and rough balanced it in. We had to drill a hole on this end and then another hole on this end and then to get it to come around for the 2400 gram bob weight that we made up for the, the rods and the pistons that we're using on this combination. So when Rob's finished here and his dad wraps up the piston making, we can get to work ourselves, building our own fine 409. Reviving some of its unique history for the first time ever in the horsepower shop. We're back with our 409 block from Lamar Walden Automotive. That's where we had it completely machined, our crank was balanced, and everything for the bottom end was tested for clearance. Well, speaking of that, they also took out some material here in the cylinder bores to give us rod clearance in that four inch stroke. And for better oiling, enlarge the oil galley feeds to the mains. Now these oil feed hose are 5 16 just like a big block. Here's the rest of the bottom end. The Eagle crankshaft that you guys saw earlier, plus a set of their 6.135 inch connecting rods. Now check these out. These are the pistons that Lamar made for us and they're 200 grams lighter than the factory ones. For bearings, Federal Mogul are the only ones that play the game for the 409 mains. For rods, we're using cleavites. Now we can drop the bearings into place, followed by the rear main seal. With plenty of lube, we're ready to drop in the crank. Next, drop on the main caps in the correct direction. Then, torque the main caps from the center out. We're using seal power plasma molly rings for our pistons and installing the rod bearings. Next, we can lube up the cylinder walls with oil. Using the built-in ring compressor with a 45 degree angle, we can now drop in the pistons and rods into their new home. But take your time because this will break rings if you're not careful. Followed by the rod caps and torque them to specs. You might not be surprised to know the original 409s came from the factory using a flat tappet cam and solid lifters. In fact, it wasn't until 2007 that you could even find and use a hydraulic roller. And that was after Comp Cams and Lamar got together to develop a correct grind that would make for a streetable 409. Next to the timing chain cover, we have the cam thrust button, which will actually press down onto the cover right here. But we need to have enough end play in it because if we have too much pressure here, it's going to wear the cam gear right into the block. So we'll just install the cover with just two bolts. Okay, now we'll check our end play by moving this cam back and forth with a screwdriver on a lobe. Okay, we have way too much end play, so in order to decrease that, we need to hammer in on the plate. Okay, now we'll check the end play again, and we have absolutely zero. So once we put our gasket in here, that should put us in the right clearance. Edelbrock now offers these W-Series Performer RPM cylinder heads that have stock port locations and valve angles. Now they come with a 220cc CNC'd intake runner that's been port matched along with 90cc exhaust ports. Now they have hardened spring cups, screw-in studs, and hardened guide plates. We're using Felpro gaskets on this engine, including these for the heads. Now you need to remove the guide plates to install the head bolts. They come in two different lengths, so you need to be careful and not mix them up or you could damage the block. Before we get too far, we want to mask off the heads and water pump ports. Now using a piece of cardboard and some more tape, we sealed up the lifter valley as well. Now we paint the entire block with Duplicolor Chevy Orange Engine Enamel, making sure to protect the bottom end with a piece of cardboard as you spray. Well, nothing more exciting than watching paint dry. Unfortunately, this paint drives fast. 
Well, we're about ready to drop on the oil pan, finish the build, and fire up this fine 409. It's gonna be like horsepower history coming to life here in the shop, right? Yep. <laughs> The bill goes on for our legendary 409, a motor that's eventually going to find a home in Muscle Cars Project Red Sled Impala. I'm already jealous. Well, i got to tell you that we're going against our own advice of installing the valve train before the oiling system, and that's because these lifters here need a little bit more time to soak in the 30 weight. This is our oil pump for our big block 409. That one was modified at Lamar Walden's to enhance flow for the enlarged oil galleys. Now they shortened this shaft and beveled the drive so it would fit in the main cap. Before you put your oil pan on, you want to make sure you have enough clearance between the pan and the oil pump pickup. So get yourself a straight edge and a tape measure. Measure your depth of the pan, then the height of the pickup. You should have anywhere between an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Now we put silicone on the stock style reproduction pan to make sure we have no leaks. Then put it in place. The original 409 came with a canister style filter, which we're doing away with. So we're using this TransDAP oil filter adapter to allow the use of a spin on style oil filter. Lifters are done. Now we can install these hydraulic roller lifters from Lamar Walden that come with a link bar specially made for the 409. We have two different length push rods because of the layout of the valves. So I usually do one of two things. I'll either mark the box to keep myself organized or I'll put all the exhaust in or the, all the intake in at one time. Right now we'll do all the exhaust. Now I know you don't want to hear Buddy squeal like a pig mm -hmm. like he did last time. So remember, oil on the push rod tips. The rockers we're using are these 1.7 Magnum rollers from Comp. And remember, flat side up when you install them. And with the poly locks in place, we can go ahead and lash the valves, and we are done. <laughs> For an intake, we're going new classic. It's an Edelbrock Performer RPM dual quad air gap. Now this is how you get the cool old look with modern day performance. They stand just an inch and five eighths taller than the original, but you still get the air gap design that separates the runners from the hot engine valley for a cooler, denser charge. Now we can drop on the valve covers. Now check these out. They also come from Edelbrock and they have a black powder coat finish for that classic look. The top of the fins have even been machined and they're specifically made for the 409. Man, this thing is starting to look like a cool classic bow tie now. Okay, on top we're using a pair of Edelbrock's 600 CFM Performer carbs. They've got metering rods that are easily removed for tunability and check this out. We're using their brand new progressive throttle linkage specifically designed to work with this intake manifold. Check out this big water pump. Now this is specific for the truck 409 block. Now that's where we got our motor from. The passenger car one looked like this, but it was made out of cast iron. This one is aluminum and came from Edelbrock. Let's get it bolted on. Using some anti-seize on the crank snout, we can install a professional products harmonic balancer and install the oil filler tube into the manifold. All right, we're just about ready to button up our 409. Now we're gonna add the finishing touches back on the engine dyno, but right now we need to take a little break. When we come back, we're gonna hear this old piece of history come to life and hopefully make some good dyno numbers. Hey, we're about to fire up Horsepower's first ever 409 motor here in the dyno cell. One we built especially for Muscle Cars Project Red Sled Impala. Now our 409 foray began with a vintage block that was completely machined at Lamar Walden Automotive. That's also where our aluminum pistons were custom made. We built up our bottom end using a new Eagle crank and a set of their connecting rods. Our comp hydraulic roller went in next we installed a set of Edelbrock 409 Performer heads, then a GM big block oil pump and replacement pan. The rest of the valve train included LWA lifters and Comp 17 rockers. We used an Edelbrock RPM dual quad intake manifold with a pair of their 600 CFM cars. 
To finish up, we're installing a Mallory Unilight ignition and one of their coils, plus a set of Taylor wires on Denso Iridium plugs. You know, back in the day, they called the 409 the W motor for, I guess, an obvious reason. The configuration of the heads sort of looks like the letter W. Well, unless you're on that side, it looks like an M. In any event, we're about ready to fire this thing up, check the timing, check for leaks, a couple of heat cycles, and we can make a run. Here we go. I got hot. <laughs> it burned my shirt. It leaned up against the exhaust. I wonder why it was hot. For headers, we're using a set of Doug ceramic coated pry wise held in place with stage eight locking fasteners. Well, the motor made 466 horsepower and 498 foot-pounds of torque, but Buddy thinks we can get more by bumping the timing up four degrees. You might like to know our motor has the same 11 to one compression ratio as the 63 factory 409 with dual quads, which made 420 horsepower. It looks like more timing was a good idea. We got 475 horsepower for a gain of nine. All right, that's pretty respectable for a street-bound 409, but we always want to make more horsepower, so let's see what happens when we bolt on a set of competition headers. Now, these came from Hooker, and they have longer primaries and a 3-inch collector, which is a whole half-inch larger than the others. Man, that extra half inch really made a big difference. We made 497 horsepower, 525 foot-pounds of torque. Muscle cars gonna have all they can handle with this motor. You got that right for sure. Well, now the finishing touch to our new old 409. This air cleaner assembly that matches our valve covers. Well, now the ball's in muscle cars court. They gotta finish that project red sled and provide a fitting home for our fine 409. Well, that's it for horsepower. We'll see you next time. Hey, let's sing the song. She's so fine, my 409. Come on. She's so fine, my 409. Come on, man. <laughs>